Yes, South Suburban Hospital. This is Hazelcrest Ambulance 27 coming at you with an ALS call. How do you copy? Yes, I have a 56-year-old female, alert annoying to times four at this time, weighing about 196 pounds. Chief complaint in slurred speech started about 30 minutes prior to our arrival. Patient has a medical history of diabetes and hypertension. Unknown allergies to any medications and uh, medications are unknown at this time. We do have a blood pressure of 208 over 90, pulse of 68, respirations of 22, clear on lung sounds, pupils are responsive, normal skin parameters, no, room air pulse sex with a 96%, and uh, four liters being given nasal cannula, she is standing at 100 currently. We do have a DEXI, a 106, normal sinus on our monitor via 12 lead at 80. We also established an IV lock 20 gauge on the right AC. We did a Cincinnati uh, scale on the patient. It looks like she has facial droopage on the left side. Let's see, arm drift on the left side as well, and slurred speech. Any further orders or instructions? And yes, uh, it was 30 minutes prior to our arrival, she was last seen normal. ETA about two to three minutes. Good, uh, here's across the ambulance out. All right, guys, what do we have? Yes, Dr. Moore, this is uh, Donna She is uh, complaining of left side weakness, and it started about half, uh, about half, half hour, hour prior to our arrival. She has history of diabetes and hypertension. No known allergies to any drugs, unknown on her drug medication. Okay, I'm Dr. Moore. We're going to get you on the stretcher and get you on the monitor now, okay? Are you experiencing any chest pain or headaches? Are you having any allergies to medications at all? All right, let's get it on the stretcher so we can get her checked out, okay? Hi, I'm Dr. Moore. I'm an emergency medicine physician at South Suburban Advocate Hospital. I want to talk to you for a few moments about a very serious condition. Signs and symptoms of strokes or transient ischemic attacks. Whenever you have a family member or a patient or even someone you've seen in the street that you're worried might be having a stroke, it's very imperative to bring them to the hospital. And it's imperative to bring them soon rather than later. Some things that you can look for to identify is a someone has any kind of facial drooping or a change in the way their face looks. Also, along with the facial drooping, you can also look for someone who might be having a speech difficulty. Other than the speech difficulty, they can get weakness in their arms or extremities. You may have heard of a term called act fast. Fast is an acronym. It stands for F, stands for the facial drooping or facial asymmetry. When you look at someone, if their face looks different than it usually does, if part of the face is hanging down, that could be a sign of a stroke. The A stands for arms. It can also stand for legs. If you notice someone has any weakness, they're not moving, or they've fallen and they have no history of falls, and when they get up, they can't move their leg, that can also be a sign of a stroke. The S stands for speech. If one has a slurred speech, or you simply can't understand them, or even maybe they're not talking at all, that can be a sign of a stroke. One of the most important parts of that acronym is the T. It stands for time. You want to be sure to bring your loved one or even someone you may have seen on the street to the emergency department or to the hospital as fast as you can. It's best to call 911. If for some reason you don't have a phone or can't call 911, find a way to get them to the hospital as soon as possible. The reason for that is because if someone is having a stroke, it's very time dependent. We have medications, we have certain procedures that we could do depending on the time the patient presents. If you're having a stroke and you come within a three to four hour time frame, we can give a medication called TPA. It's a specific medication that can go and potentially reverse the symptoms that you're having. We don't know how long your symptoms will last. We don't know if they'll be permanent. If they haven't gone away and they can cause a lot of distress in your life, it is very imperative that you come because we can give this medication. It's a simple IV medication that we would potentially give if you meet certain criteria. The purpose of the medication is to go into the brain where the clot may be happening that's causing your stroke symptoms. It can bust that clot up, and when it relieves the clot, you can get your symptoms back. This is a one-time medication. We only give it if you come within uh, you know, three to four hours, and we only hang it within about a 60-minute time frame. You only need it once. We don't give it any more than that. And this is the reason why it's very important to come early. 
If you come outside the time frame, unfortunately, we can't give this medication. However, it is good to still bring your loved one if for some reason you couldn't get them to the hospital within the three to four hour time frame. We'd like you to bring them within the first 20 minutes of the symptoms happening. If, for instance, you happen to come outside of the time frame where we can give TPA, we still have measures, surgical measures, that we may be able to do to go inside the brain where the clot is to remove the clot from a special uh, camera that can go into your brain. If you meet criteria, this is also a possibility. So it's very important, even if you're outside the time frame or bring your loved one in, you still bring them in regardless. These are just little tidbits I hope that you can keep with you so that you can be able to recognize any signs and symptoms of stroke. Again, that's looking for any changes in the face, what we call facial asymmetry, facial drooping. It looks different to you uh, from the norm. Uh, again, arms or legs, if someone has any weakness in their arms, they can't move their arms. Usually it's one side as opposed to the other. That's another sign of stroke that you want to get them into the hospital as soon as possible. Speech, if someone can't talk to you, it looks like they're trying to form words and they can't make them out. If someone's learning their words, you simply can't understand them. Those can also be very important signs of stroke that you want to get to the patient, into the hospital as soon as possible. And then lastly, time, it's imperative when you notice those things, don't wait, call 911 right away. And if for some reason you don't have a phone and can't call 911, you try to get that patient to the hospital as soon as possible. These are things that could potentially save your loved one's life or family or friend's life. And I hope that these help you out uh, as you go throughout your days. And I hope that this helps you in uh, identifying signs of strokes. Hi again, Village of Hazelcrest residents, Gwen Gray back with another edition of Let's Talk. This edition is different and special. Can't use any other words, sorry people. But uh, we have a focus on health this time and this focus is actually on strokes and stroke awareness. And we have the honor and privilege of having with us today, Joyce Fitzpatrick. She's a registered nurse and stroke coordinator, uh, a member of the stroke team at Advocate South Suburban Hospital. Welcome, Joyce. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you for having us oh, today. Oh, it's good to have you. Thank you so much for coming out. And Joyce is joined by Robert Clayton. Robert actually is a stroke survivor, and he's a co-leader of Advocate South Suburban's Stroke Survivors Support Group. That's a tongue twister. Wow. Welcome, Robert. Thank you. It's an honor you. being here. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're look for, looking forward to what you have to share. Well, of course, since, you know, uh, the people now know what your title is and they now know that you are a stroke survivor, right. this particular segment is about strokes. Joyce, why don't you start us off and, and tell us what is a stroke exactly? Sure, Gwen. So you can think of a stroke as a sudden interruption of blood flow to the brain. By the way, I kind of like to use an analogy with my uh, stroke survivors is that if you think about a, a blood, uh, a, the blood vessels to the brain, kind of like a pipe to the brain, mm -hmm. if it becomes blocked, then you don't have flow anymore, right? Okay. So with a stroke, there's decreased blood flow to the brain that carries nutrients and oxygen. So that brain tissue that might help us to speak or to move our muscles actually dies. Wow. Yeah, that's there, incredible. And okay. there's two types of stroke. Mm -hmm. um, one is a blockage stroke mm -hmm. or an ischemic stroke, okay. which is caused by a blood clot that actually blocks that blood vessel. Okay. Or there is another type called a bleeding or hemorrhagic stroke, and that's where the blood vessel actually breaks or bursts. Mm -hmm. And I know. Rob, when he talks, he'll talk about that he had a hemorrhagic stroke. Okay, wonderful. You know, I often hear people say, and not necessarily medical professionals, but I often hear people say that a stroke is, is like a heart attack of the brain. That's right. Uh, is it's, it? It's, it's, it is. It's the sense of it's decreased blood flow mm -hmm. to the brain that causes the tissue to die. With a heart attack, it's decreased blood flow to the heart that causes the heart attack. Gotcha. So you're right. Okay, wonderful. Either way, we, we need to get help and we need to get information out there so that people can know what's happening to them. So we'll come back to you in a little bit, Joyce, with some more questions. But Robert, yes. thank you so much for coming. You are a survivor. Yes. In my book, you are a miracle. Thank so you. tell us about what happened. What happened when you had your stroke? Uh, I had my stroke. April the 2nd, 2008. Okay. 
during that, the weekend before that I had the stroke, I was taking hydrocortisone water pills, they call them water pills, just okay. regular water pills. Okay. And I ran out. So I said, I'll get some Monday. Mm -hmm. Well, Monday I didn't get them. Tuesday when I woke up, within 20 minutes, my arms started going limp and that's when the stroke occurred. Wow. Did you know what was happening at that time? I pretty much did. Okay. But I didn't want to. I didn't want to stop my routine of my day. I had so much to do. I had to take my daughter to the hospital for surgery on her shoulder. Okay. So anyway, I asked her. I, she was the only one in the house, and her bedroom was closed, and my bedroom door was closed. But I tried to go to my door, but I failed, and I couldn't holler for her because. As Joyce say, you lose oxygen in the brain. Oh, wow. Okay, so that as you lose the oxygen in the brain, all your motor skills are in decreasing. Impaired, uh-huh. And she found me on the floor when she did open the door, and I told her, go ahead, call the ambulance. I, I couldn't do anything else but call the ambulance. So they took me to South Suburban Hospital. Okay. And... They said I was bleeding at the brain. It was a right side stroke, okay. right side. Okay. So that's why I have the left paralyzed side was paralyzed. Left, left side. Understood. And they airlifted me to Rush Hospital, where I spent 40 days. But they were gonna do the surgery, so I woke up and I saw this lady, and the first thing I said, "What? Well, where's my stitches?" And oh. she said, "You didn't get any stitches." I said, "Why?" She said the bleeding stopped. Wow. So there I was for 40 days in intensive re rehabilitation. Wow. Now before yeah. we get into the, the details about your rehab, if you don't mind my asking, how did that feel? You said that you were trying to reach your daughter, you, you took a step, you fell, you wanted to be able to yell out for help but you weren't able to. What is that feeling? Were you, were you frightened? That's a were great you... question. Mm -hmm. And the only feel I can give you is no control. Wow. No control at all. Wow. I mean, you just, whatever happens, you have to go along with it because you, you can't move your fingers, can't move your arms, wow. you, your eyes shut down, you're squalling, you can't swallow any, anymore. Wow. So, so were you able to speak happened. to her at all when she did find <clears throat> you? I, no, I passed out. Wow. When the ambulance got there, I was passed out. Gotcha. So they, okay. they revised me back. Okay. And uh, as I understand, there's a medicine called TPI. TPA. TPA. Dr. Moore had talked about in the previous segment. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. But Is that they, what was given to you? No, they weren't able to give it to me because of the bleeding at the brain. I so see. it would have caused more trouble if they gotcha so maybe the other type of stroke that would right, have been good for stroke. right yeah. understood okay wonderful now tell me or tell us all about the rehab process so you were transferred to rush you stayed there for 40 days what was rehab like incredibly hard because you could you you were doing exercise that you normally do with all your functions mm -hmm. but i didn't have any functions so it was you know you couldn't stand up. Mm -hmm. I spent five years in a wheelchair. Wow. And you you had to get transferred all over the place. And the best thing, you know, when you, when you wake up and you all of a sudden been using two arms for all your life, mm -hmm. for 50 years, and now you're down to one arm. So you just, to get through it, you have to adjust. Wow. You had to really had to adjust. That's incredible. So you yeah. were in a wheelchair for five years. Exactly. So that meant that, of course, you had to relearn how to walk all over again. Yes, ma'am. I would say my, my just, my lifestyle of what I, what I did before I had the stroke, mm -hmm. I had to adjust to that also that I wasn't going to be able to do the things that I do anymore. Mm -hmm. So that that put a lot of how you say things, uh, a lot of things on my plate to 
removed from my plate yes. because I couldn't perform as I used to perform. Yes, uh, absolutely. Yes. I know that was tough. So that was the hard part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It makes you human, but yeah, yeah I'm sure that's It was tough. a humbling experience. Yeah. yeah. And there had to have been some days where you probably just felt like, you know what, I can't do this. What, what kept you motivated? Wow. Me? Okay, good. I, I really did. Uh, I, I think they, in, in Rush Hospital, I was in a, the uh, stroke center. Okay. It's called the Bowman Center. Okay. And all the patients in there were stroke survivors, or they had a stroke within a week. Mm hmm And just being in that environment kept me motivated. Wow. Because the first thing, when they take you to therapy, if you're motivated, they say if you're motivated, you're going to have a good time in therapy. Okay. But if you don't want to do therapy, it's going to be a hard road. You have to do it. And people would think the exercise, you know, we say exercise all the time, but mm -hmm. it's, it, is a, it is a great medicine. Wonderful. A medicine that people are really, really not aware of. It will, it will uh, restore you. Okay. Because God, God gave you the equipment to get restored. Absolutely. Yes. How long did you spend in rehab? Wow. In, in the first one? Or even combined. Days? You can I talk about. I think I still take therapy now. It's been okay. 10 years. Okay. I had it when I had a stroke at 50, mm -hmm. and I just turned 60 two weeks ago. That's a so, blessing. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, so, you know, having gone through all of this, mm -hmm. um, I guess. My first question would be, what would you share with someone, even based on your own experience? You talked about not taking the medicine and kind of putting it off. I don't know if that was something that had to do with, you know, hypertension or whatever. Maybe you can speak to that. Mm -hmm. But what would you share with somebody in terms of lifestyle? You know, now that you've gone through this, you know, what advice can you share? You know, can we look for this, do this or that, or what can you share from your perspective? Well, <clears throat> what I found out and I had to find out my way was no matter what you do, you had to give it time. Wonderful. Uh, uh, five years in a wheelchair, so eventually I got out of the wheelchair, but while you're in the wheelchair, you might, you might think that you're never going to get out of it, but you give it time, and time, with time, everything's going to change. Mm -hmm. You could swallow. You can see the numbness goes away a, a little bit. The tingling goes away. Uh, a lot of things occur. The arm, um, when, I, when I first woke up in ICU, it was glued to me. Wow. Now I'm able to almost shake your hand. Yes. So in time, it took 10 years, but mm -hmm. and I didn't, the time went so fast, I, I really didn't notice it. Understood. And I think my to think that I survived, what brought me to, what mo motivates me and keep me going is my support group. That's awesome. Yeah. That is just wonderful. Seeing, awesome. Just seeing how much they, uh, they're interested in being around people with the same issues they have. They Absolutely. love it. That's and good. I love and them. I'm sure you're quite yeah. an inspiration. Yeah. What's your outlook? My outlook? Mm -hmm. Well, um, wow. That's a hard one because okay. I can go with so a personal outlook sure. is just to be an advocate for people with disabilities. Beautiful. Yeah. Then I'll take it from there. Okay. But, but uh it's a lot of things that occurred in the last ten years that as far as people with disabilities mm -hmm. or survivors that I had no knowledge of twenty years ago before I had the stroke. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm working with now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Sounds like you're a believer that things happen for a reason. They we're do. Put in, in places. And if you if you uh, be consistent, something else gonna come good. It's gonna come out of it. Beautiful. Without a doubt. But you have to try. Yes, you have if to. If you try. don't try, you will never find out. Awesome. Never. Robert, you have a great story. I mean, Thank it's you. absolutely wonderful. I'm almost moved to tears. I'm trying yeah. to hold back here. But you are truly, truly an inspiration. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story. Thank you.